Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are continuing with our special guest, Claire Lopez, from the Center for Security Policy. She's been sharing some, well, disconcerting bad news about people in positions of power in our country that ought to scare you to death. We're going to continue today. Welcome back, Claire. Let's pick up where we were last episode. We were talking about CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Tell us a different organization that's an affiliate led by Usama Jamal. Yes, so the US CMO, United States Council of Muslim Organizations, is an umbrella group. Uh, it is the umbrella political group for the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States, a group of groups. CARE uh, is the lead group within that, but there are many others, um, upwards of three dozen at last count. And, and you can find them just by going to the US CMO website. Uh, they very helpfully list them all there for you. Uh, and they're adding more all the time. So Usama Jamal is the Secretary General of uh, the US CMO. And one would think that he would, in that position, be well known to the senior national security circles of the United States, but no such luck. Well, actually, I should say they do know, at least some of them know, um, but don't do anything about it. Well, what is it that we should be concerned about with this guy? Well, for example, um, he is a, uh, a very skilled operator uh, and um, knows very well how to work his way into uh, the confidence of, of officials uh, with whom he deals and into departments of the highest levels of the U.S. government. So, uh, for example, uh, we know that uh, he has been invited on more than one occasion uh, by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo uh, to be a guest and to attend the annual ministerials, as they call them, annual ministerials on religious freedom. Uh, he also apparently um, is, uh, he holds some sort of position, official position, actually within the U.S. Department of State. This is the lead guy of all the Brotherhood organizations in America. Uh, he has been to the State Department, as I've said many times. Um, and uh, if we can circle back to DHS very quickly for a moment here, um, just a little while ago, that would be back in May of this year, 2019, uh, DHS formed a new subcommittee that they called uh, for the prevention of targeted violence against faith-based communities. Sounds so good. Uh, unfortunately, uh, among the founding members, and you can go to their website at DHS uh, and find out who are the founding members, well, among them is MPAC, Muslim Public Affairs Council. Uh, Salam al Mariati, Brotherhood Guy, uh, leads that organization. They are one of the founding members of this um, lovely subcommittee. Uh, and they openly say at that website of DHS that they work with CARE, that they and MPAC and CARE are going to work together on this. Um, and so, you know, they're inside of DHS. Um, I, I mean, we could just go on and on. Um, we, we have uh, something called the, uh, the Faith-Based Community Safety and Security Symposium. Sounds so good again held in September, month, uh, a couple months ago now, 2019. Um, and the Department of Homeland Security and the White House Office of Public Liaison extended a special invitation to U.S. CMO Secretary General Usama Jamal to attend at the White House together with Vice President Mike Pence. And it's not that they haven't been warned. It doesn't seem they have. It doesn't seem right, you know. In care in Chicago, as an example, um, the home base of the Obamas. Is there a connection there between care and the Obamas? Well, 
I mean, certainly uh, CARE, along with other Muslim Brotherhood front groups and, and, and leading officials of Brotherhood front groups, were, were welcome uh, in, in both appointed and advisory positions throughout the Obama administration. So there's that. But more um, to the broader, I guess, uh, historical point here, I'd say uh, Illinois and, and Chicago was really ground zero uh, for the establishment of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States going back decades. So that's really why they have such a firm foothold there and have expanded out from there. Well, obviously, it's the, it's the home of the Nation of Islam, uh, led by notorious hater of everything non-Islamic. Louis Farrakhan hates Jews, hates whites, hates America, um, wants his own country, believes he's descended from a bizarre alien group. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Um, he's been isolated uh, at least in popular media, as a hate monger, in spite of the fact he appears in photos with everybody, including President Obama and President Clinton, uh, which has me um, concerned, but more so about CARE and their affiliated groups who are now, as you said, inside the government, training our security personnel at the highest levels in almost all the lead departments of the cabinet. All true about Nation of Islam and, and Louis Farrakhan, but traditionally uh, that group, the Nation of Islam, has not been affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood. They've, they've, they've kept a distance there. Um, they're they're even too crazy for them. <laughs> Uh, th there are rivalries even within the Islamic movement, which is what the overall movement calls itself, by the way. I didn't make that up. Islamic movement. But there are all kinds of rivalries, ethnic, sectarian, and so forth. And, and this is just one of those um, uh, that they have not uh, traditionally been affiliated. All right. Well, here's a not an oddball question, and, and I'm sure a lot of viewers are thinking this right now. You're bringing to our collective attention at the same time, the fact that known enemies of the United States and our way of life, our freedoms, our protections, our rights to be free, to congregate, to associate, to speak, to have our own religion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, obviously referring to the Constitution and most prominently the Bill of Rights, are not protected under Sharia. In fact, Sharia disclaims all those rights and those are not permitted. And yet the people that propose this way of life should be our way of life are now inside the hen house, as we've talked about it, and the wolves are in there. What should the average viewer do now, Claire? Well, that is a perfect lead in, Barry, thank you, uh, for a little plug I'm going to make for a forthcoming book that the Center for Security Policy will be publishing within the next couple of weeks. I, I think uh, it is uh, written by Dr. Steve Kirby, who writes often uh, at uh, the Jihad Watch platform, Robert Spencer's group, uh, platform of the David Horowitz Freedom Center. And uh, Steve Kirby's book is about a co the contrast, the stark uh, contrast uh, between Islamic law, Sharia, and the U.S. Constitution, specifically, just as you said, uh, the Bill of Rights. And I think he takes a look at, uh, it's either five or six of the most important of our uh, amendments. The first, the second, let's see, fourth, eighth, and thirteenth, if I recall correctly, and uh, contrast these uh, utterly antithetical antithetical to anything uh, that is, is within uh, Islamic law or Sharia, which, by the way, is real law. It is really written. It is absolutely fixed since the 10th century. It is taught in schools of law throughout the Islamic world. It is adjudicated in Islamic courts of law all over the world, and very likely here in the United States, because Every mosque, every Islamic center 
is obligated to follow the example of Muhammad and have an Islamic tribunal within its premises. Well, we've talked about it many times, you and I, that Sharia and the U.S. Constitution are oil and water. They can't mix by definition. You're one or you're the other. And it sounds to me like there's a great deal of support for the other, as it were, another way of life that you and I and 300 million Americans will not be comfortable with. Where can we get this book when it's released? Stay tuned to centerforsecuritypolicy.org or the shorter URL is securefreedom.org. As I said, the book by Dr. Steve Kirby should be out within the next couple of weeks, but stay tuned to those websites and you'll see the announcement there. Terrific. I urge all of you to check back in so you can check out that book. It's going to be an important message. Thanks for joining us on American Truth Project today and ATP Report. A special thanks to friend of ATP, Claire Lopez, for joining us today. I want to remind all of you, take out your phone, type in the word truth in the message, and send it to 88202 so you can be subscribed to our free text message service to get this and all of our videos and articles on a daily, more or less basis. It's always free and it's easy. It'll be on your cell phone. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.